Welcome to part 21 of my basic series in the Blender Game Engine. In this video, we're going to be creating the coolest thing yet in this tutorial series, and that is a third-person platformer character setup uh, in which you can actually control a character walking around. Uh, of course, I have a character in the middle of my scene, and if I press P to start playing my game, you can see that automatically he goes into sort of an idle animation. So it's kind of just waving his arms around, waiting for you to do something. And then, of course, you can press the W key on your keyboard to make him start walking and use the mouse to make him move around by moving the mouse left and right. And yes, of course, you can make him jump um, around and even jump up onto platforms and then move around and then fall down. So we'll be creating this exact scene from start to finish in this video. Um, I'm gonna go quite quickly in the first part of this video because I'm already assuming that you know the basics of Blender and how to rig a simple character using bones in Blender. If you don't know those things, you'll be able to pick those up uh, probably in this video, but also I'll put a link on the screen right now to my mini series on how to create a Minecraft character from start to finish, including bones and some pretty advanced facial rig stuff in there as well. Um, don't be put off that it's a Minecraft character rig. You can apply these same tools and principles and techniques. Um, they all apply to organic characters, not just Minecraft characters as well. But let's go ahead and jump in. I'll go up to File and click on New and reload my default startup file. Of course, when you start working with the Blender game engine, you want to switch your render engine up here from Blender Render to Blender Game. Now, I'm going to actually model my character very quickly from a cube and then add an armature and make some animations of a walk cycle. Uh, if you have not seen my latest videos in my Blender 2.7 tutorial series on making walk cycles and making uh, uh, walking on a path, I'll put links to those on the screen right now as well. Um, that'll give you a better idea about how to create a better walk cycle than in this video. But let's go ahead and jump in now. I'm going to go to my front view with the one key. In fact, I'll turn on my screencast key so you can see most of the keys that I pressed down here. I'll press 5 on my numpad to go to my front view. I'm going to take this um, cube and make it into my character's body. So I'm going to actually scale it um, front and back on the Y axis. I'll press tab to go into edit mode. I'll press control R and make a loop cut. Click and right click to put it in the middle. I'll press control B to bevel it out. I want to make a kind of spot for his neck to stick out. I'm not spending really any time caring about this character very much, but let's go press E to extrude, and then I'll tap E again to extrude. This time I'll, after, oops, I'll tap E again, but then I have to undo that. I'll tap S to make this uh, bigger for the head, and maybe even a little bit bigger than that, sure. And I'll tap E to bring that up, and then E and click, and S to make um, the top of the head more rounded. Of course, we're going to apply the subdivision surface modifier um, to this mesh to make it more smooth when we add bones. Um, and if you're not sure what I'm doing here, I'll put a link on the screen right now to my introduction to edit mode in Blender in my Blender 2.7 tutorial series. Uh, if you're not sure how to do things like loop cut and slide and extrude and go to edit mode and work with faces and vertices and edges, uh, those are all helpful things that you'll need to know uh, in order to follow along with me. I'm going to press Control R to make a loop cut in edit mode, I'll put it up there to make kind of a square for the arms, and I'll press Control R to put a loop cut right through the middle of my character, click, and then right click to put it in the middle, and I don't want um, those edges where they are, so I'll select them both and then tap S, and then X on my keyboard to bring them inwards. Now we have faces, actually I'll do that again, S and then X, so we have two faces there for our legs to stick out of. Um, let's go ahead now and extrude some arms. So I'm going to actually tap E and then click and then S because we're going to start small and then get bigger. I'm sort of emulating a uh, little big planet here a little bit. Uh, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and make a loop cut right about there. And maybe I'll actually I'm going to do that. Control R, I'll put it right in the middle and then I'll scale that down. I'll do a loop cut right up here. And maybe I'll do a little bit of an extrusion out here in a scale. We're going to use Symmetrize after we make our leg to make both halves of the character, so I don't have to worry about um, modeling the other arm and the second leg identically. We can just do that automatically. Um, I'll go to my front view again. I'll tap E and then S and then E and then E again and then 
S like that. We never want to cross over this middle line. And note that I did not um, move the cube left or right or in any direction before I started modeling, so it's exactly centered in my world here. So uh, I think I have my character left and right. Maybe I'll make a loop cut, control R around this way. And that way I can kind of bring the side of the head out there. Maybe I'll make a loop cut through the middle of the head and make that uh, more rounded uh, automatically. Uh, maybe I can bring the tops of the arms up to make it more rounded like that. Or I might try making, uh, in fact, I'll make a loop cut there and then I'll take all the edges on. So I'll hold Alt and right click to select an edge loop there. Same thing, hold Alt and Shift and select these ones like that. And now I can tap S and then Shift X on my keyboard to make that uh, scale, but not on the X axis. So S and then Shift X. Looks pretty good to me. I'm not too worried about topology here um, because I'm going to be adding some surface that is not really uh, the purpose of this video anyways. So I'll select everything in edit mode. I'll press W and select Symmetrize. I have to make sure down here on the bottom of my tool shelf, so you can press the little plus and then make sure this little plus is expanded too, that we're going in the right direction. In this case, I modeled the negative uh, X uh, axis direction on the character and then I have to go from negative to positive here. You can do it the wrong way and then you won't get the result that you want. I think I have my character. Let's see how it looks in, with subdivision surface modifier applied. Uh, so I'll go ahead and add it on my wrench tab. That's the modifiers tab. Um, and it's looking okay to me. How does it look like that? And then smooth. Um, it's a little bit boxy for me. So I'm going to take maybe these corners here and I'll do the same sort of a thing. Maybe I'll select that entire edge loop. The same thing as the corners of the arms. Hold Alt and Shift to select um, the, the second and third and fourth um, edge loops there. And then I'll tap S and then Shift Z on my keyboard to scale um, inwards but not up and down. Looks pretty good to me. Maybe I'll do the same thing or similar on the legs, but I only have to do uh, one half again. So maybe I'll go S and then Shift Z. And that will scale it front and back only because they're scaling towards each other. Then I can move it a little bit inwards like that just to get a nicer uh, leg shape. And I'm spending way too long on this, but I'm just going to do a little bit, few more little things here. I'm going to, sorry about that siren, if you can hear that in the background. I live uh, near some busy, busy streets and near a fire hall. so. I apologize for that if you are annoyed by that siren. Um, let's go ahead and tap E and then S. And now I'll use uh, Symmetrize again. I'll select everything in edit mode. W and Symmetrize. Good. So we have our character. Um, I don't quite like, I'm being too picky here. I don't quite like the shape of his head. So maybe I'll take that and move it down and take that. And move it up. There. Perfect. Let's go ahead and add an armature. An armature is another word for bones in Blender. Uh, with the 3D cursor in the middle of the scene, I can press Shift S on my keyboard to bring up the snap menu. And then I can select a cursor to center. Um, or you can press Shift C, but then it zooms out your scene. Uh, so I like Shift S better. And I'll press Shift A. I'm going to add an armature, single bone. Of course, it adds it where your 3D cursor is, which is in the middle of my character. So I'm going to go up to my armature tab and enable X-ray mode. And so now I can see the bone, even though it's in the middle of the character, just like an X-ray. Uh, I'll move it down. I'll go into edit mode and I'll bring that up. I'm not going to make a neck on this character. Uh, I'll extrude the tail ball of that bone with the E key and then extrude it straight up like that. Um, I'm not going to give this character shoulders or anything advanced like that, but I'll put my 3D cursor right there. I'll press Shift A in edit mode. That brings a new bone. Um, I'm going to press Shift S with that little orb selected. Shift S and I'll say cursor or selection to cursor. That'll bring that little uh, tail or pointy nub down to where the original nub is, is now. Uh, that means that there is no bone shape what's well, there, but it's sort of taking up no space. But I'll drag right away over to the right. And that looks pretty good to me. How we're looking from the top view? No, it's off, so I gotta move it like that. I'm not even gonna make two arm bones here. I'm just gonna have one arm bone, one leg bone, because this is uh, a. Uh, actually, I think I will do a little bit more advanced here. Let's go ahead and press W and subdivide um, the arm bone, and I'm gonna make sure that um, the mesh here has enough segments. It does not. 
So I'm going to bevel that edge loop there. In fact, I should do it on the, actually I'll just flip it the other way around. Um, I will bevel it, control B, and then I'll put two edge loops uh, there and there. And then I'll press control R and put one back in the middle. So now I have three instead of one. That's necessary for bending uh, an arm, not just an edge where you have the elbow, but near proximity edge loops as well. Let's go ahead and press AA to select all, W and symmetrize, and this time I'm going the opposite direction, uh, plus to minus. Okay, we've got our arm bone and the elbow is in the right spot approximately. Let's go ahead and go back into the edit mode of the armature. I'll select both these bones. Um, actually, I'm not. I'm going to use a better technique, but I'm going to now make the leg bones. So I'll press Shift A, put my 3D cursor there first, move this straight down to right about there. Maybe move this over just a smidge. Uh, I'll press W and subdivide, and let's go ahead and see where that crease is for the knee. I'll move it up a little bit. Same thing here. Control B. I want proximity loops above and below the knee, and Control R to remake the knee edge loop. And now I'll select all W and symmetrize and make sure we're going positive to minus um, again great let's see how it looks from the side and know we need to go back into edit mode of the armature and select those two and move them back this bone and this bone need to be children of um, the backbone so i'll select in the, the children first and the backbone last control p to make parent and we're going to leave them offset we don't want them to join up with the bottom of or the tail of the uh, backbone great let's go ahead and name some things i'm going to name my head bone uh, this will actually help us out when we're animating uh, this is the backbone this is the arm upper dot uh, that is his left bone dot l and we're naming things specifically here arm lower dot L because we're going to uh, flip the bones over, make a copy or make a copy and flip them over and then have Blender automatically rename them. Uh, this is leg upper dot L and this one is leg lower dot L. Uh, it's under the bone tab of course. Now if I select all of these bones that I want to copy and flip over and I duplicate them in edit mode, so shift D to duplicate and I'll right click to put them back in the exact same spot. What I can do here is I can press shift S to put my 3D cursor back um, to the center of my scene, which is the center of my character. And then I'm gonna change my pivot point um, to that 3D cursor. So now if I tap R, the copies that I just made will rotate around the 3D cursor. If I don't have that selected, they'll rotate just around their median point in the middle of the selection that I have. So I'm gonna rotate them around the um, 3D cursor. Actually, I'm not going to rotate. I'm going to scale. So I'll tap S and then X to scale them kind of over to that side. But if I tap S and then X and then negative 1 and type enter, that was S and then X and then negative 1 and enter, I can flip over the armature. And now I can go to uh, armature and flip names. And now those end in a dot R. I think we're done the ring. Let's go ahead and go back to uh, pose mode and we'll select the mesh. I'll hold shift and select the uh, armature. doesn't matter which bone and press control P uh, for parenting and I'll set with automatic weights. That's a special bone mode. So now hopefully I don't have too bad of a, oops, I've got my rotation still set to 3D cursor. I want medium point. There we go. Hopefully the, def the de deformation here isn't terrible. Um, it's not gonna be good, but hopefully it's not pulling like totally wrong bones when you move the leg and it doesn't pull up the head. Um, it's looking pretty good to me. I'm not too concerned. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna put a hat on this character. I just remembered that I wanted to do that, so I'm gonna go back into edit mode. Um, it shouldn't cause us too many problems to add things to the mesh, even though we've already uh, made the armature control the mesh. Uh, normally that's a bad idea, but uh, I don't think we'll run into too many problems. Let's go ahead and select those four vertices, Control plus, Control plus, and I'll tap S and then Z to scale that up to make it look more like a hat. You can tell what I'm making here. It's going to be a character wearing a red uh, hat. So let's make that one extruded just a little bit. And then E, hopefully I don't get flagged on my YouTube channel. Uh, for doing some fan art here. I'm not selling this game, so let's see how that looks like. Let's put one 
Maybe I'll put one right there, and then I'll get that edge loop, and I'll tap S and then Z to make that. Um, I can't see the edges very well when I'm looking at it with the subdivision surface modifier. Just for fun, we're making it wear a hat. Sure. Okay, S and then Z. We'll bring that up a little bit, and we'll turn back on the subdivision surface modifier. And I don't like how the hat has a square end, so I'll take those edges and those edges and bring them back like that, and maybe smooth out that corner by dragging back those edges just like that. Maybe I'll take uh, those and go S and then uh, X on my keyboard. There we go. I'm liking that. Let's go ahead and take a few of these vertices and scale them on the corners um, in so that we don't have quite the same um, square shape of a head. So I'll tap, um, I don't want that one selected. Good, S and then Shift Z to make it more round like that. And I think I want to make another loop cut kind of like uh, that. And again, kind of like uh, that below the head and we can scale that in. Let's see if it still works. Yes, it does. Perfect. Let's go ahead and add a material to our character, we'll add animation, and we'll make it work in the game engine. Uh, that took longer than I hoped, but it looks pretty cool. Let's go ahead to the materials tab, and I'm going to give it a diffuse color. Let's make him uh, kind of blue, because uh, I'm going to make the grass or the ground green. I'll make a second slot here. I'm going to add a second material. This is going to be for the hat. I'll make it uh, red. You should take your materials and turn down specular. That'll make them not so shiny. Uh, generally, games don't have shiny things. That looks like it's uh, like from an old 1990s um, um, 3D animated cartoon. And I need to select the entire hat here, and then I'll press C. C is for circle select. Then I can um, mouse or press my wheel down on my mouse to deselect, or I can just hold shift and right click to deselect the faces that I don't want. Control plus to select more of the uh, faces. And I'll go to second material and assign. In fact, I'll undo that. Control minus and then assign because we only want to get that hat. Perfection. Let's go ahead and add a walk cycle. This is going to be a very simple walk cycle. Um, I need another window on my screen. It's going to be a dope sheet window. So I'll grab that little triangle area, drag it straight down with my left mouse button. And we're going to make this new window into a dope sheet window for animation. When you make a new animation in Blender, it's actually called an action. And you can actually call actions to run in the game engine. Uh, that's how we're going to make the animation play when the character is moving forward. So uh, let's go ahead and select the armature. And I'm going to go to my side view by pressing 3 on my number pad. And I'm going to pose my character in the four um, walk cycle positions. And hopefully we can just flip the animation over left and right to make the uh, left leg stepping forward. If we already have animated the right leg stepping forward, if you understand that. Uh, again, I'll put a link on the screen right now uh, to my video on making a walk cycle in Blender. that has a more uh, advanced uh, rig setup, and it'll give you a better idea of how to make a better looking walk cycle than in this video. Let's go ahead now, turn on auto keyframe insertion. And I'm going to pose my character um, with one leg back, one leg forward, and this is on frame one. Sure. Let's go ahead now to the front view and rotate the arms down. Boy, that deformation is pretty bad uh, on the side of his body, but oh well. Um, I'm not going to make him with his arms straight down. He can just walk like a little child with his arms straight out. That looks more cute anyways. Um, let's go ahead now to the second keyframe. I'm kind of treating that line there on my screen, if you can see that in, on YouTube, as the ground. So I'll go about 10 frames later. In fact, I'll move that back to frame uh, 0 with the G key. I'll go to frame 10, and I'm going to make my second pose, which is the falling pose. Um, so I'll move this leg back. I'll move um, that one like that. I have to move the body up here. I'm going to move that one forward and that one kind of like that. And let's see how that looks. Well, I didn't put the character on the ground in the first one, so I have to kind of move that one like that, and that one back on the first frame, and that one kind of out like that. So now let's see how that looks. 
Um, I don't have any keyframes on the arm yet uh, past the first frame. That's okay, we'll go back and do that after. I'll go to the, the next uh, pose, which will be 10 frames later. And this is gonna be the passing pose, which will be just a little bit off center, or you can do it right on center, it's up to you. It's gonna be higher up, because I'm keeping the bottom of the foot on the ground there. We're making a walk cycle, of course, when he's walking in place, because we're gonna make him move forward using programming, using the logic bricks. Okay, so let's go ahead and make that passing pose. Uh, the next pose is a, bit, a little bit higher if we can. So I'm gonna move his leg like that. Um, I'm gonna move him up just a little bit to kind of simulate him going up. Maybe I'll move him a little bit down on that frame. And then we can make this leg continue to go forward. And this one like that to kind of match and parallel that leg and that leg. And so now let's see how that looks. Now hopefully, after I do the arms, we can just mirror this step. And because the next keyframe will just be another Y pose like this, but it'll be switched over left and right. So hopefully after I do the arms, I can just do that with this simple, simple rig. It didn't work in that last video in my Blender series when I had a more complex rig for some reason because of the naming of my bones or something like that. Um, because this right leg is forward, we want this arm to go forward. So go to my side view, I'll tap uh, R and I don't quite like how that is. So I'm gonna use my local gizmo. Uh, that means I can actually rotate it the way that it should go and not based on the local axes. You see how this gizmo is sort of twisted. Uh, on local as opposed to global. So that's a good thing. Let's go ahead and rotate this one forward on the first keyframe and this one back on the first keyframe. And then um, it's gonna eventually go forward some. I'm gonna wait to finish the arm until after we can copy left and right, hopefully. So I'm gonna go to this first frame and I'm gonna select all of the bones. I'm gonna press Control C. I'm gonna go um, to frame 40, Control C, hopefully would have copied the pose. Uh, that's what that does. It doesn't actually copy bones, it copies a pose. And then I'll go to frame 40 and I'll press Control V. Although I think I'll use, instead of that, I'll use pose and then paste X flipped pose. And let's see how that looks. I'll go that way. You know what? I'm not having much luck in this version of Blender uh, pasting poses because um, it did not work. Let's try doing it the other way. I'll undo that a few times and then Control C to copy. I'll go to this frame, Control V to paste, but then I'll go to flipped on X axis and no, it's not working. I don't think, unfortunately. Ah, it worked on me or for me when I practiced this tutorial, so I'm not sure why it's not uh, right now. So what I'll do is I'm just going to quickly redo those four keyframes. I'll speed this part of the video up now, uh, so I'm not wasting your time. All right, so I finished the next four keyframes of the walk cycle. So if I kind of scrub through, you can see that his left leg is back. If I, uh, if you follow it, it's now moving forward into falling and then passing and then the high pose. And then it'll go down to the opposite um, Y pose with the opposite leg forward. Now the left leg is forward. And so now it'll repeat, uh, but the opposite to go back to its starting position. And the last keyframe I have here is the high pose, which is right before the next Y pose, which should be right there. But I can just duplicate this row by selecting the top uh, keyframe there and then uh, pressing Shift D to duplicate and I'll slide that one down there. So now I have a complete walk cycle. Um, I'm gonna do the arms now very quickly. Um, the arms are in the right position on the first keyframe, but there's no middle keyframe. I'm not gonna do anything except go to that middle Y pose and I'll get my gizmo back for rotation and I'll set it to local. And now I can spin it to match uh, that way. And then this one, I can spin it to be forward. Let's see how that looks from the side. So now I have a very simple walk cycle, but it looks not half bad. What I have to do here is scale it down to be the right speed. If I play it, it's in slow motion. Before I do that though, I wanna to go to the second to last frame and select all of my bones and press I to insert a location and rotation look rote uh, keyframe uh, because I don't actually want two copies of the same frame at the start and the end. So I'm gonna get rid of the old end keyframe and this row, the second to last row, is one little bit of motion 
um, before um, it repeats itself. So that's where we want us to end the loop before it starts with that same keyframe again. So I'm going to select that last keyframe uh, column and delete those keyframes. So now we have a proper uh, loop animation. If I change the end of my timeline now to 79, we can see what it looks like. It'll actually loop through. I'll press uh, Alt A to play and we have a walk cycle. That uh, looks pretty good. It's way too slow though. So I'm going to go to my first frame, frame zero. And actually I wasn't looping properly. I need to be at the beginning at start uh, frame zero in order to loop properly. Let's see how that looks. I might just solve a little bit of our delay issue there, or might actually add a little bit more delay, to be honest. Um, let's go back to frame zero, and I'm gonna select all my keyframes in the dope sheet. I'll press A to do that a few times, and then I'll tap S to scale down the animation to make it go quicker. And then if I type uh, 0.5 after tapping S and press enter, now it's half the length, which means twice as fast. Um, I'm going to end this at frame 40. It didn't scale it down quite perfectly because it had to kind of snap to the nearest frame. So let's see how this looks. Pretty good. If you want a faster walk, you can do that. Um, in fact, I'm going to scale it down just a bit more, maybe to 30 frames. We'll see how that looks. I'll end it at frame 30. And you can make it go even faster if you want, be down to frame 20 or so. And of course, you'll have to change that to 20 to see how it looks looping. I like that. My character is going to walk pretty fast in this game. Good. We want to name this action, this animation, and we do that not in the dope sheet itself, but in a sub mode of the dope sheet. It's called the uh, action editor. And this action editor is kind of how you can edit uh, specific actions if you're kind of stacking actions up one against another one. Um, this action is just called arbitrary action right now. I'm going to type in walk and I'm going to click this F and that'll actually make Blender store uh, this walk uh, action no matter if it's being used by anything in the file or not. That's uh, particularly important uh, when you're doing actions in the game engine. Maybe you save um, your file and you quit Blender and your action isn't actually on any of the objects. Well, Blender might actually delete it from your file. It'll do some cleanup, like some garbage cleanup and get rid of it if you don't have this F, this fake user check. That's what that stands for. So now Blender believes that there are two objects using this action, even though there's only one object. Great, I'm gonna quickly make an idle animation now of him sort of um, waving his arms a little bit. Uh, it'll be a longer animation because it'll be slower. So I'll click this little X and now this animation is no longer, or the walk animation is no longer on our character. I'm gonna select my whole armature in pose mode, press Alt G and Alt R and Alt S. Sure, why not? To clear out the location, rotation and scale. And I have auto keyframe turned on, so I'll turn that off, delete all those extra keyframes I just made. But I'm going to turn it back on because we're going to start animating. Uh, we're making a new action here. I can click on new, but it could just make it for me automatically. Um, once I start adding keyframes, I'll type in idle right there to the name. And sure, we'll have it a, give it a fake user too. Um, his legs are going to stay still here, but he's going to kind of wave back and forth. So on frame zero, I'm going to make it a sort of um, like that, and then I'll recorrect these Alt R. No, I just have to rotate them like that to make him look like he's standing. So um, let's go to frame uh, 40, and I'll make him go in the opposite direction. So I'll make him go like that, and then I'll rotate these R. In fact, I should rotate these one at a time, shouldn't I? I don't think it really matters actually. And yeah, I don't quite care that one of his feet are uh, uh, is off the ground there. Maybe I rotated that too much. Um, one of the benefits of having an IK rig uh, is that the feet will stay on the ground for the most part. We don't have that here. So um, that's okay. Sure, I'm not too concerned about the quality of that. Um, let's go and duplicate this, this first keyframe. So I'll select it, Shift D, put it at frame 80 or so. So now he's kind of doing that. I'm going to make him swing his arms just a little bit. So I'll move them down uh, on the first keyframe and I'll make one rotate forward a little bit, just a little bit. And this one will go back just a little bit. And then he'll go do the opposite in this keyframe. And then we can duplicate the first keyframe and put it at the end again. So now we're sort of just doing that. Let's make his um, head sway a little bit. 
um, two. So in this first keyframe, it'll be like that. I don't have these perfectly aligned, do I? G. There we go. Uh, the first keyframe is heads tilted that way. This head's going to be tilted the other way in this one. And then we can just duplicate these again and replace. Perfect. I have my idle animation. Uh, it's not great, but whatever. And I want this um, action to not loop improperly. So I'll go to the second to last frame again. I'll select all my bones and I'll tap I. And I'll select location and rotation. And so now I can delete these extra keyframes because I don't need them. And I can delete that row as well. Not not the second to last row, row, but the last row. And there we go. I've got a 80 frame idle animation. Great. Let's go ahead and save this file. I'll save it to my desktop. I'll save it as uh, BGE-21-001. Uh, sure. It's important to save in Blender. It doesn't crash nearly as much as it used to. In fact, I hardly ever get crashes now, but you never know. Better be safe than sorry. Let's go ahead and press this X to remove the idle animation from our character, and I'll press Alt-G and Alt-R and Alt-S to clear out the uh, location, rotation, and scale. I accidentally had uh, my keyframes turned on, so I'll delete them and get rid of or turn off the red record button. So now I need to start working like I'm working with a game object. Now I'm not going to actually make my uh, character uh, armature move with my arrow keys and controls. I'm going to do that with a box that's going to go around my character. That box will have much easier uh, movement and collision detection and that box will be invisible. So let's go ahead and I'll press Shift A on my keyboard. I'm gonna add a cube to my scene. Um, I'm gonna make this cube a little bit uh, fatter. So I'll tap S and then Shift Z. So I'm not scaling it on the Z axis. And I'll go to my front view just to see if that's wide enough. Yes, it is. And then I'll tap S and then Z on my keyboard to make it about as tall as my character. Um, and I'll move it up on the global axis so that it's just sort of touching the bottom of his feet, maybe S and Z a little bit more. Great. I'm going to apply the scale of this box. So I'll go to Object, Apply, uh, Rotation and Scale. Sure, why not? And I'm going to parent my armature. In fact, I'll go into the armature's uh, object mode. And I'm going to select the armature, hold Shift, select the box, and press uh, Control P because I want the box to be apparent uh, as an object to the armature. So now if I grab the box, it'll move the whole character. It's a problem here though, and that is the mesh of my character is gonna collide now with the box. To stop that from happening, uh, because if I press P right now to play my game, and I make um, the box into a um, character object, and the mesh is already a static object, um, things will go bad. It'll start moving because it's colliding with the thing that's inside of itself. And so I'm going to take the character mesh and make it have no collision. So now my character will just fall like he's supposed to. Let's go ahead and take the cube and move it straight up. I'm going to press Shift S and then cursor to center to put my 3D cursor in the middle of my scene. I'm going to add a, a cylinder actually to make my ground. I'll tap S and Z to make it a little bit um, shorter and then S and then Shift Z to make it a big round uh, playing field for my character. It needs to be a static object but it's going to have collision bounds of a cylinder and is there a way of making the cylinder have um, a better uh, um, collision box than it already has? Well, I'll just make it have a convex, convex hull um, a collision bounds shape. So hopefully the cylinder will actually repel objects and hold the character up even at the edges. Okay, so we want to make this character have some controls because right now if I press P to play, um, you can see the character uh, but only inside of a box. And I want to make sure this character box has collision bounds of a box. And if I press P now, it should land right on the ground, which it does. The box I can see, I don't want that. So I'm going to go to the box and uncheck or click on this little camera so it won't show up. Um, when we play our game. Let's go ahead now with the box selected. I'm going to change this dope sheet window. In fact, I'll just make it really small. I'm going to make a new window by dragging on this little triangle area. I'll drag it straight down 
it'll be our logic editor window. We've got to start uh, programming, of course. If you're not familiar with how to uh, program using logic bricks, check out the rest of this tutorial series. Uh, there's a link to that in the description area below. Uh, I cover everything from how to create basic um, controls for a character using your mouse or arrow keys, how to do collision detection, how to switch between scenes, all that kind of fun stuff. If you have not seen the rest of this uh, tutorial series and you're just starting out with this video, go ahead and check all those out. You can learn how to collect coins and make counters and timers and switch between scenes and make clickable buttons. Um, it's all there to make a very basic game. I'm going to add a sensor. It's going to be a keyboard sensor because we're going to listen for the W key on our keyboard. So I'll click in here and I'll tap W and we want to make our character uh, move forward when we do that. And because our character is set to a character uh, physics type, I'm going to add an actuator. It's going to be a motion actuator and we're going to change the motion type to character motion and I'm going to make him move forward on his negative uh, Y axis. That's the way that that box is pointing. So I'm going to type in the Y location, negative 0.2. Um, you have to play around with what numbers that you actually want. And I'm going to connect up the sensor to the actuator by clicking and dragging that little dot to that little dot, the ports. And now if I press P to play my game, and I press W, my character will move forward. Just a note that if you have your armature selected, uh, I'll try to select it by zooming in. You might not be able to press P. I found that's kind of a bug. Um, if I have my armature selected and I press P, maybe if it's in pose mode, maybe, yeah, P stops responding there. If you find that frustrating, <laughs> I'm sorry, but uh, we pretty much don't have to go back into pose mode ever um, until we're playing our game, I think. We'll have to see, but I'll just leave it in object mode now and that won't stop P from working. Um, great. My character can fall, I can press the W key, let's go ahead and set up mouse controls. I'll select that box, that's what's actually moving our character. I'll add a mouse uh, sensor, but we don't want to uh, be listening for the left button, we want to be listening for mouse movement of any kind. When we move our mouse, we want to have the character um, uh, um, turn left and right based on our mouse movement. So I'm going to add a mouse actuator. We're not going to change the mouse visibility here, we're going to change the mouse look, or we're going to use the mouse look actuator, which is an awesome actuator. It has not been around for that long, but it's a new addition to the Blender game engine as of about like a year and a half ago or so. I'm going to connect up mouse movement to mouse look. I don't want to have my character tilt up and down. I want him only to use the left and right motion of my mouse on the screen. So I'm going to unclick to deselect the Y axis, and I'm only going to leave the X axis uh, active. And so now you can press P and then you can move your mouse left and right, and then you can make your character point, and you can make your character walk around. But what you're probably interested in more than doing that is how to make the walk happen at the same time. And this next step, uh, and by the way, you can change your sensitivity here. So if I type in three and play, uh, my character can turn more quickly, so you can kind of customize that for how you want it to, or how responsive you want it to be. How you get bones to work in the game engine, how to play animations on bones has changed a little bit in the last several versions of Blender. I'm not sure when it happened, but you used to not be able to use the uh, armature modifier um, on your mesh. If you select your character mesh and then go down to your... Um, why is that linked together? I'm going to get rid of my outliner and then make a new outliner. Things get linked together um, if they're kind of very parallel now in Blender. Um, I'll open up my outliner again just so I have one. Um, if I select my character mesh and I go to my uh, modifiers tab, you can see that I have an armature modifier, which is how the mesh knows to deform and be parented to the bones, but each individual bone. And your character mesh also has under the object data tab a vertex group uh, that corresponds with every bone in your armature that has um, influence on your character. Now, you used to have to actually go to your um, uh, modifiers tab and get rid of the armature modifier in order for the armature to work in the game engine, which was sort of backwards. And then under the object tab, you would set um, the mesh to be a parent of the armature as an armature, but we're not going to do that because it just seems to work now in the game engine as you'd expect just from animating with armatures. So uh, let's go ahead now and with our armature selected, I'm going to add a sensor and we're going to listen for that same keyboard button, the W key on my keyboard, and we're going to add an actuator where it's going to be an action actuator 
and I'm gonna connect those up. So when we press the W key on our keyboard, it'll trigger and fire and make on this armature the walk animation play. I'm not sure why there's other um, actions there that aren't being used, but whatever. So let's go and see if that works. If I press P to play my game, and I press forward, if nothing's happening, that might be because we're not in pose mode right now. So let's go ahead and see how that works. Nope, I'm going to select the armature. Oh, what's happening here is that we have not specified the start and end frames. Our walk cycle, if I go back uh, with the armature selected and just bring up the walk uh, animation, it's uh, 20 frames long, it starts at zero and goes 20, so that's 21 frames long. I'm gonna click the X to get rid of it from the active uh, scene though, and I'll press Alt R and Alt G and Alt S to put it back in its default pose. Um, the armature needs to know, or this, pardon me, this actuator needs to know the start frame and end frame. So I'll type in 21 there. And so now it knows how long and when to loop the walk animation. We also don't want it to just play. We want it to repeat, because otherwise if it will just play, it'll just play that walk cycle once and it won't constantly repeat if I hold down the W key. So I'm going to select um, loop stop and that means that it'll actually stop playing that animation as soon as I let go of the W key. If I use loop end it'll keep playing that, that walk cycle until it finishes one of the uh, actions to its last frame to frame 21. So it might keep walking after you let go if you use that. So I'll use loop stop and I think we're pretty good. Let's go ahead and press P. Of course, I have my armature selected, so that's a bug. And can I walk? No, why not? All right, I had to pause the video there, and I tried a lot of different things to get it to work, and I finally found out what the problem was. I actually uh, stopped the video and watched uh, my recording back to see what I had done wrong. It turns out it's something very, very simple. If I select my character mesh and I go to the... Um, modifiers tab, you can see that I have the subdivision surface modifier uh, applied first at the top of the modifier stack. That means that it happens first and then the armature modifier is on the character mesh. Well, it turns out in the game engine, the armature modifier does not know what to do if it comes after the subdivision surface modifier, which modifies the mesh. So I'm going to actually just click on this little up arrow uh, to put the armature modifier first to move it to the top of the stack. Subsurf that will now happen after the armature modifier knows what vertices to control on the mesh. And so now if I select my uh, armature, if I can do that like that, you can see I have all my settings correct. I accidentally typed in 21 into that value. Um, it's 21 frames long in total. That's my walk cycle animation, but it's always at frame zero and includes zero. To 20 so that's 21 frames i'm moving with the w key and i have um loop stop set and i think everything else is good here so if i press p to play my game and i press w on my keyboard i have a walking character awesome now the trickiest thing when you're programming this for yourself is to make it so that when your character stops it switches to another animation those animations can conflict with each other so i'm going to press escape on my keyboard i'm going to have my armature selected and if you mess up a few of these settings or one of these settings in particular um, in this next step uh, this will not work very well for you and you'll get frustrated like i uh, did when preparing for this video so i'm going to add a sensor uh, it's going to be a keyboard sensor because what i want to happen and where is it? It's right there, is when I'm not pressing the W key on my keyboard, I want my character to revert to the idle animation of him just sort of standing and waving his arms around. So if I press the W key, but if I invert that, so if he's not pressing the W key, I want him to be playing the idle animation. So I'm gonna add an actuator for the idle animation. It's gonna be an action um, actuator. We're gonna play idle and we're gonna connect those up. The idle animation, I believe, is about 80 frames long. I could be a little bit wrong there, maybe it's 79, I'm not sure. And we want it to uh, do the same thing. We're gonna have it loop until it's told to stop, not, and not play to the very end of its 80 frames. Now, this is where you might get stuck if you're trying this on your own. Um, these actions have priorities, and it turns out 
that we need to not have them at the same priority. Otherwise, one animation will play and the other one won't play. So I'm actually going to put the idle animation, I believe it needs to have priority in this case, over walk because uh, the idle will happen when you first start your game. I believe that's the logic there. So if I press P to play, my idle animation is happening. It's sort of waving his arms back and forth and tilting back and forth. I can walk. The problem here is, well, if I let go of the W key, Will he resume his um, idle? Yes, he does, but I don't have keyframes on his legs to put them back where they should be, so that's a problem with my animation. Let's go ahead and quickly uh, clear that up, but obviously this priority one on the idle uh, after, and it's in this order too. You, we added walk first and the idle second, so I'm not sure if that really matters, but I wouldn't deviate if you don't want to have too many headaches. Um, let's go back to our animation because I want to quickly um, go back to pose mode and fix that. So I'm going to bring up the idle animation uh, on my character. As you can see, that's what he's doing, but I don't have any keyframes um, on his lower legs, it looks like I have leg upper and uh, on both left and right. So I'm just going to go to each one of these keyframes, and it is frame 80, not frame 79. Uh, both go to both those keyframes, select both those bones, and tap uh, I for location and rotation. Uh, and I can just duplicate those because uh, it doesn't really matter because those are children bones of Shift D again to duplicate that. There we go. So now uh, those bones um, are set up to work or, or not move and actually are told where to be. Do these arms or lower arms, are, do they have keyframes? No, they don't. So I'm going to do that too because I'm not sure if I added keyframes on those arms in the walk cycle or not. So again, go to the first frame or frame zero, tap I, location and rotation, go and just duplicate them, shift D, whoops, shift D. And make sure you line them up properly and shift D like that. We can now click the X to get rid of it from the character. I'll select all the bones, Alt R, Alt G, and Alt S. Let's go and see how this all looks and we'll improve the way our game looks a little bit just so we get an exact duplicate result of my demo at the beginning of this video. And we'll make our character jump, which is super, super easy. I'll press P to play my game. Uh, I've got him walking. If he stops, he reverts the idle animation. He can start walking again. Perfect. So let's go ahead and make our character jump. That's going to be on the cube object along with walk and turn. Uh, I'll make that a little bit smaller so we're not taking up so much room on the screen. I'm going to add a sensor. It's going to be a keyboard sensor. We're going to jump with the space key. I'm going to type space there. and That's going to be W just so we're naming our our logic of uh, bricks um, and not leaving them all their default name. Uh, when we press space, we want our character to jump. And because this cube is set to a character physics type, we have a built-in jump force and jump action. So I'm going to add in an, uh, an actuator. It's going to be a motion actuator. We need to change simple motion to character motion and we need to enable jump. That's what that value is for. And so now if we connect those up and shrink this down a little bit and press P to play. If we press space, our character can jump and we can even uh, walk around and jump. Now we have a bit of a problem here. It's not jumping high enough, but also when I jump, it stops moving forward even though I'm pressing down um, for it at the same time. And that's because we want to check this little, can we see it in here? This should say add. I'm not sure why it doesn't say AD, but um, that's what that's for. So that's the, there we go. That's uh, the add button. So it's it'll add the motion of the jump to any other motion that is happening in the scene that already was happening. Uh, maybe I'll just check that add as well. Why not? I'll press P. And so now if I'm walking, I can jump and I'm not stopping as I jump. I'm going to press escape. Uh, I want my jump force to be higher. I'm going to make it about mm, 22. That'll be quite high. Let's see how that looks. Good. Okay. Our lighting is very bad. I'm going to select my lamp and I'm going to change it under the lamp tab in the properties window to a sun. It's very rotated, so I'll press Alt R to clear its rotation and I'll change my viewport display to material. Uh, we don't have any material on our ground. I'll add a diffuse green yellow material for grass. I'll get rid of specular and. Um, I believe what I want to do 
is put that sun higher up so we have a shadow there. Now the shadows are very harsh when you play uh, in your game. You can't um, press P with the sun selected it turns out. Um, in fact we're not getting any sun at all or any shadows at all and that's because of the shadow box size. Um, if I check on show shadow box we can see that um, there it is. Maybe it's because of our rendering um, style that we have, our rendering settings that we have. Under the camera tab, I'm going to change the shading, that's what I meant to say, uh, to GLSL. That will give us much better results. So if I press P now, we'll actually get that shadow. Um, but it's very black and the shadow runs out. And that's because of our, is it called frustrum size? It's the size or width of this box. Uh, shadow box and Frustrum, I got that word right, good. Uh, the frustrum doesn't mean the, the length of the light or how long the light goes to, but it means um, the size of the box. And you can only make it a square, you can't change it to rectangular or anything like that. So I'll just make it as big as I need it, maybe move it over a little bit. And I'll press R to rotate it just slightly so our character isn't, um, that's in my shadow, directly below him. That looks pretty good to me, but it's very dark in the shadow, so I'm going to change the camera to, under the camera tab. We'll give, um, actually I believe it's under the world tab, we're going to give some environment lighting. That makes things look a lot better, but it's way too strong, so I'll turn that up a little bit. And now if I press P uh, to play, my shadows aren't quite so bad, and I can walk around, and I can jump, and if I select my ground and duplicate it, Shift D to duplicate, I'll put it back where it was by right-clicking, I'll t move it up a little bit, and I'll tap S and then Shift Z to scale it down. I can make platforms really easily, you know, make it a little bit taller on the Z axis. So now, hopefully, the scaling is right, I can walk below it, I can jump and bang my head against it, or I could turn around and jump onto it, but my jump force is not strong enough, so I'm going to turn that up under the Physics tab to maybe 27 or 28. Sure, I'll play. And there we go. I can rock around, I can fall off, I can jump, and land on the platform as well, if I actually can control it. Uh, but that's how you create a controlled character, uh, just like in one of my favorite games of all time, uh, Super Mario 64. Um, but I think that will be it for this video. Uh, please don't forget to click that thumbs up button if you like this video and you learned something from it. Um, go ahead and check out my Facebook page at facebook.com slash borncg. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel to see more videos just like this one in Blender and in tech. But that'll be it for this one. Thanks. Bye-bye.